Hey everyone and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm gonna be refinishing my shower walls in here with a DIY refinishing kit from a company called Bathworks. Now to start off, the first thing I'm gonna do is replace the fixed shower head there with a hand shower because I'm going to have to scrub down all the walls in here really well. And to do that, it's gonna be a lot easier to have a hand shower to rinse them off with instead of that fixed head. Next, I'm going to quickly remove the towel bar in the shower. So I don't want to have to work around this or clean around it, so I'm going to get it out of the way. All right, so I'm now ready to begin with step one in the DIY kit process. And step one is cleaning the shower walls. So before I clean, I want to remove any personal items from the shower, which I have already done. And if you have shower doors installed, which I used to have in here, you're going to want to uninstall those. If you do not know how to do that, you can check out my video on how that is done. So for cleaning the walls, they recommend three different products. You can use Comet, you can use TSP, or you can use Ajax. I don't have any Ajax on hand or in the house anywhere. Um, I did have Comet and TSP. So I'm gonna start with the Comet for my first round of cleaning, and then probably for the second round, I'll end up using TSP and then do another round of Comet. You're gonna wanna clean a couple of times. So if you have different ones on hand like I do, go ahead and use them all. I'm gonna start by rinsing down the walls using the handheld shower head, which is why I installed it. And then I'm gonna end up using my scrubbing pad with Comet sprinkled on it and start scrubbing my walls. Now, I am not going to mix my Comet and my TSP, or if you have Ajax, like don't be mixing any of those. I have no idea what would happen if you did, but it's probably just best off if you don't. So the main goal by cleaning the walls is you want to remove any soap scum, any oils, any buildup, you know, anything that's going to interfere with the refinishing process. So this refinishing kit uses a, um, a resin. So it's a paintable resin. You're going to be able to use a roller and just kind of paint it on. Now it's not epoxy. Epoxy is a type of resin. This is not epoxy. <clears throat> but we don't want anything to cause any impurities when we apply this. So cleaning the walls extremely thoroughly is very important to make sure nothing interferes with that resin. All right guys, so I just knocked out the first cleaning of the walls. So that was round one. And as you can see here, I got my hand here so the camera will focus. Um, this caulking here is really bad. It's missing in some locations. It's uneven, it's tore up. Um, I'm gonna have to redo that. So this is an optional step in the process. Um, you could remove all of the caulk if you want and redo it. You could remove it all and then end up applying the finishing application, uh, the refinishing kit, and then do your caulking. Um, or if your caulk is good, you just leave it alone. Mine is not. I have some areas that are good and I have some areas that are really bad. So I'm gonna remove the caulk in all the areas that are bad like this and redo it all. And then the next step is I also need to fill these holes. I am, these holes are for mounting the shower doors. I do not intend to remount the doors. So I'm gonna fill those holes in because I'm gonna put up a shower curtain rod instead. So far, I've managed to remove all the caulk on this side of the shower wall. So all the way up to the top edge and then coming down, I have a little bit left down here in the corner. It's quite a bit of a gap there. So I'm gonna come back and finish that once I do the opposite side over here. So this side wasn't as bad on this edge. I probably could have left it alone, but this bottom part is pretty bad. Same as the other side. So I'm gonna have to pull that out. And I am going to go ahead and, and do it all the way up because there are a few areas where it's kind of tearing out and it looks a little rough. But the inside edges here 
of the back wall are pretty good, so I'm going to leave those alone. Okay, I'm now ready to apply new caulk to the areas where I removed the old stuff that was bad. I have finished re the areas of the tub and shower walls that needed to be redone, and I have also patched the holes that the shower doors left and from the shower towel rod that I removed. So at this point, I'm ready to move on to the next step. Now, if you do have to re the tub or the shower walls during this process, be aware how long it takes to fully cure before it's supposed to have exposure to water. In my instance, it takes a full 24 hours before they recommend having heavy water use on the caulk. So if you're trying to knock this out maybe in a single day, which is possible, or in a weekend, this might delay your process if you're not paying attention to how long that caulk will take to cure if you have to do that. Now for the next step, I need to wet sand all of my surface area that I'm going to be working with with 120 grit sandpaper. So I've got a sanding block right here. I'm going to hose down the walls here to get it wet and then I'm going to sand everything. And I'm not trying to overdo it, but I just need to scratch up that surface to be able to have that mechanical bond when I go to apply the resurfacing kit. All right, so I just finished sanding the walls and now I'm going to clean them for a second time. I'm going to use my scrubbing pad and my Comet again to clean the walls. And if you think that 120 grit isn't enough to prep the surface, you can see some of the white powder coming off of my hands here. All right, that's from sanding. So even with the wet sanding, it, uh, it scratched up the surface pretty good and we want to remove all that dust that's on there. So they tell you just to rinse the walls. I'm going to go through and scrub the entire thing again. All right guys, for this next step, this is gonna be optional most of the time for your shower walls. You only have to use this product if you're working with um, a metal bathtub. So if you have iron or steel bathtubs, you're gonna to have to use this. This is called Easy Etch and it is for etching the surface, which is uh, a chemical process where basically an acid is used to prep the surface for refinishing. Now, it's highly recommended to use Easy Etch on any surfaces where you're gonna be applying this refinishing product but for metal, you have to use it. So I don't have to use it on the walls, but I am gonna be redoing the tub once I am done with the walls. So I went ahead and bought it. And since I have it on hand and I got more than enough than that I need for the tub, I'm gonna put it on the walls as well. All right guys, since you are working with some sort of acid here, you do wanna have uh, all the protection you can. So make sure you have gloves on. Um, they do recommend wearing a mask. I don't know how bad it's gonna smell and eye protection as well. Also, you want to try to be in a well-ventilated area, which of course with bathrooms, they aren't typically well-ventilated because they're usually, uh, there's no windows or anything to get a cross breeze through. So um, in this situation, I do have a door open and I'm going to turn the bathroom fan on once I start applying it. All you have to do is pour it onto the sponge, apply it to the surface. We're not scrubbing here. We just want to uh, cover the surface with it and then let it sit for 20 minutes. And then after 20 minutes, we're going to come back and, and uh, wash it all off. All right guys, at this point I've done the etching process on the walls and I've rinsed it off. Now you probably can't see it on the video, but I can see that it has dulled the finish on the walls. This used to be a lot more reflective. I could kind of see what was in the background and now I can't. So moving on from here, what we can do at this point is we can kind of go into our initial prep phases to get ready for the refinishing process, which means taping, um, cleaning up the areas, making sure we don't have any dust or debris. But you have two steps you can go, or two options, I should say, you can choose from from here. You can choose to leave all of your hardware on and simply tape around it and then paint around that and hope for the best and that you don't have any issues and you cover the entire finish that is exposed. Or you can do what I'm going to do, which is remove all the hardware so that you can paint underneath there. And then when you put your hardware back on or replace it, which is what I'm ultimately going to do, then you don't have any issue at all and your finish is absolutely perfect looking when you put the new hardware or the old hardware back on. Now, if you do have a handheld shower head attached like I have right now, I would suggest that you take that off so you don't have to work around the 
uh, hose line here and you don't have to worry about it possibly touching the surface while you're painting. So even if you don't intend to take everything off, at least remove this, unscrew it from here, and then um, tape up the pipe so you don't have any water leak down while you're working. All right, so I've removed all the hardware so that I just have all the way up to the, the edge um, so I can paint underneath and then cover it up with my new stuff. Now, if you don't know how to remove that stuff, I am gonna be releasing a separate video that covers that, but I'm not gonna show it in this video. Now, what I do need to do is this area is still technically dirty, so I'm gonna clean it with a solution of TSP. Um, and of course, it's not gonna be anywhere near as clean as the rest of the surface, but when this is refinished, this will end up being covered up. So if it looks a little worse, it won't matter because it'll be covered with the new hardware. I'm now going to my final preparation steps. So I'm gonna be taping off everything outside the shower and then I'm gonna tape off the tub so I don't get any of my refinishing on the tub because I'm gonna be actually using two different tollers. I'm gonna use a, one toller for the walls and then when I come back and do the tub later on, that's gonna be a separate toller. So, you know, I don't want the showers refinishing to be on the tub surface. So during this process, while you're taping, make sure that everything is fully dry and you have vacuumed. And then before we continue on, I'm gonna take a tack cloth to everything to make sure I don't have any foreign uh, residue left on the surface. Next step, I'm gonna take a tack cloth and wipe down all my surfaces that I'm gonna be uh, applying the refinishing kit to. So at this point in the process, you should have done all of your prep work and you should essentially be able to move on. As soon as you do this, you don't wanna go back and do anything else. All right, so this is the point of no return. Once you apply this, you won't be able to go back. You're gonna to have to continue on. So this is the liquid primer, and the instructions say to use a paper towel, apply it, put the uh, liquid primer on the paper towel, and then cover every square inch of the surface you're gonna be working with. Now, I do feel like it's kind of weird to use a tack cloth and then apply this with a paper towel because you know paper towels can sometimes leave a little bit of residue but the instructions say to use it so I guess they feel like it's okay. Um, so that's what we're going to do. Now once you apply this you need to let it sit for five minutes so during that time frame that's a great time to start prepping your uh, your resin mixing in part A and part B. This has a slight smell but it's not that bad so you probably don't need a mask yet. So I was wrong. The liquid primer absolutely reeks. So wear a mask, make sure you've got the fan on and proper ventilation because it smells so bad. Okay, moving on. So liquid primer needs five minutes. So I'm gonna go ahead and start prepping my, uh, my hardener and my refinishing paint. So this is a type of resin. So kind of like epoxy, epoxy is a type of resin as well. You paint it on. So you got a mixing container here. You got your part A inside of it. It smells horrible, by the way, because I, I uh, opened it up already and it reeks quite strongly. And then you got your part B. So you're gonna mix these two together. If you were doing a bathtub right now, they have a non-skid additive. That's for the bottom of the tub. So, you know, if you step in your shower, it's not gonna be super slippery. So you can add this in there. Because I'm doing the shower walls, I'm not gonna use this. I'm gonna set this aside and uh, I'll have two of them for when I do the bathtub. Now, once you mix this, they want you to mix it for about three minutes and then let it sit for five minutes and then you can apply it. Now, this is going to smell. So. All right, I'm gonna let this sit upside down and collect at the bottom. And I'm gonna add my part A. Okay, so I've mixed up my uh, my paint, which is called that. Um, it needs five minutes, they say, once you mix it. So it's gonna be applied using two different methods. We have a two inch foam brush, 
and we have a four inch foam roller. So that's what they want you to use. They want you to use foam, not a, a normal freaking roller. Yeah, use foam. Um, so I'm gonna use the brush for all the areas that the roller is not gonna be able to get. So the corners and stuff. Um, when you do this, they don't want you to drag it down the wall. They want you to essentially dab it on because it needs to go on kind of thick. Now, um, I am a little concerned about how much material there is. They say it's supposed to be able to cover 120 square feet. So they say if you're just doing your shower walls, you only need one kit. If you're trying to do the walls and the tub, you will need two kits. So I do have two kits. I have one for the tub and one for the walls, but they're different colors because that's what I intend to do. So hopefully this is enough. So we're gonna find out. Um, so gonna wait a couple more minutes and then we'll start. is you know since this is a paint like resin mixture um, you add that hardener to it you do have a set working time so the working time for this is supposed to be two to three hours so it should be more than enough to do this but um, just be aware you're on the farm It's been a few days since I refinished the shower wall, so I wanted to give the uh, material plenty of time to dry and cure before we came back in here to do this, but I'm not happy with the end result here. So a couple of things. First off, the product smelled horrible. Um, using a normal mask was not good enough. You really need a full-on respirator to provide fresh oxygen. You also need to uh, be able to bring in a heavy amount of airflow. So the bathroom fan is not enough to be able to take that smell out of the air while you're working in here. Even with the door open, having fresh air coming in, that's not enough. You really need to bring in an industrial sized fan to move airflow quickly to get fresh air in and get the bad air out because the smell lasted, well, a minimum of 24 hours, but it just made the entire upstairs uh, smell absolutely horrible and it caused like headaches from smelling it and all kinds of stuff. It was just, it was just really bad. So right off the bat, this is not necessarily a great product if you want to be able to use the bathroom or, or that part of the house for 24 hours. It's just not going to happen. Now, I did watch several videos in advance of other people doing this and using this product, and no one mentioned that the smell was that bad. Some of them were wearing respirator masks, but they didn't say that the smell was absolutely atrocious, that it would really be like impossible to be in the room with it. So, you know, there's plenty of products out there that will say like, oh, you should wear a respirator mask for your safety. And of course, you know, at the end of the day, you're out there using the product and it's like, well, I, I don't want to wear a respirator for this. This is not that bad. It doesn't smell that bad. I'm not going to be exposed to it that long. I mean, even normal paint will say, you know, to take precautions and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, if you're painting for an hour or two, it's really not a big deal. This was a big deal. Okay. I've been exposed to some bad smelling stuff in my time in the military. This was absolutely atrocious. This was pretty bad at the end. If you want to use this product, make sure you're using a full respirator mask That's and just have plenty of airflow. All right. Other than that, the smell, is, the smell is what it is. Nothing can be done about it. So moving on from there, my next gripe with the product is when the instructions said that you would have two to three hours upon mixing the product to apply it to the surface. Um, now that is mentioned, I believe, in instructions at 70 degrees Fahrenheit, you would have that two to three hours. I think it was about 74 in here on the day I was applying it. So not that big of a difference. Two to three hours was definitely not achievable. I was having difficulty applying the product after about an hour. You know, I was already starting to see how much it was thickening up and just how much more difficult it was getting to work with. So if I'm supposed to have two to three hours, we split that difference and call it two and a half and I'm already having issues after an hour, I find that to be a little bit annoying because I'm nowhere close to even, I'm not even at the halfway mark for the working time at that point. Make sure whatever you're gonna be working on either Mix a smaller amount, mix only like half of the product at a time because you know you can open part A and part B and not have an issue until you mix them together. So maybe only mix half of part A and part B and then when you're done using that first half, come back and mix more or 
be capable of working really quickly, maybe having two people or three people, depends on how big the surface area you're working with, but at least minimum of two people to work on the surface to be able to get that product on quickly and be done. Because again, after that hour or so, you're probably gonna see that product uh, decline rapidly as far as your ability to work with it. All right, so I've covered my two main um, issues with the product, which was the atrocious smell and the working time with the product not being what I believe to be the, the correct working time. Now let's cover a couple of the issues I'm seeing after the fact on the walls. So I got a couple of things here. First off, I have air bubbles on the surface all over. Now that it's done, I would be okay with the air bubbles everywhere because it is everywhere. It almost gives it like a textured feeling. So because it's essentially equal all around, I could live with the air bubbles personally. Second, what I have is I have roller marks. So I am using correct roller. They say to use a foam roller and I'm using correct size, but I have streak marks on the walls. So I am a little bit annoyed about that. Thirdly is there are drip lines. I don't know if that's because it was too much product in that area or what. If you look up top here, I have areas where the product started to you know, fall down and it left drip marks on the walls. And then fourthly, you can see I have areas where even though I applied the product into the corners with the foam brush like I was supposed to, those areas are not properly covered anymore because the product moved on me. And one last thing before we move on to some of the things that I thought were good about the product, they do mention the instructions that upon applying the first coat, you can immediately apply the second coat from where you started at. So a single kit is supposed to do 120 square feet. Well, this is not 120 square feet. This is like 50 square feet. There should have been enough product to do the whole thing. I did not have enough product to, to coat this entire thing a second time, but I personally believe that you should not try to coat it a second time upon finishing the first coat. So I ended up mixing all my product at once, so I didn't really have a choice. I needed to use up the remaining amount of product because I did still have some left over. I managed to get about this wall and around half of this wall um, coated with a second coat. But I mentioned earlier that the product started to become thicker and harder to work with as it started to dry, which is natural. But again, if you do the product and you manage to get everything on the walls in that hour time frame, it's already getting hard to deal with. And then they say you can apply a second coat. So I'm, I'm going by what their instructions say. I think that's also where some of my imperfections come from as far as roller lines and some of the uh, areas where I've got like drip lines is because I'm trying to roll that second coat on. The first coat went on nice and easy, but the second coat's now getting thicker and heavy and that first coat is wanting to stick to the surface and it's pulling that product. I personally would not go to try and apply a second coat right away. I would mix enough product to do your first coat and then I would leave it, let it dry, and then come back in a day or two once that product is cured and then mix the remaining material and apply your second coat. And I think you will probably see better results um, doing that process, in my opinion. All right, now some of the good things about the product. Once the product fully cured, this surface seems to be incredibly hard and durable from my limited experience with it so far. So in the first 24 hours, you could kind of scratch the surface with your nail. So I would not recommend touching the surface at all within the first 24 hours. But it's been a couple of days now, and if I do anything now, it doesn't leave any scratch marks. So I do think this is plenty durable for recoating shower walls. You know, so long as you're not doing anything crazy in your showers, it should handle any sort of normal wear and tear that you would do to your shower walls. It's also very shiny and reflective. I thought it was going to be essentially a flat black when it was done. Maybe I just didn't happen to pay enough attention while reading the product. I was okay with that, but when it came out to be essentially like a high gloss, I was very happy with that finish. So I think had I been able to uh, apply the material and get a proper coating everywhere and it come out really good, then my final vision for it would have been um, something I would have really liked seeing. Now applying it, mixing the product up, all that was very easy. Again, the issue was just how fast it started to dry and then the areas where flaws started to show through, you really couldn't go back and fix it and that was part of the problem. Okay, now all of this is just my own personal opinion. This is the first time using the product for me. 
Um, if you've got more experience with this product and know like some tips and tricks, then please leave some comments down below. Maybe you can help out other individuals who watch this video and if they're interested in using this product, you can help them get a better result. Again, my first time using product and these are just the things I've experienced so far and what I've learned. I might be willing to try using the product again in the future now that I got those lessons learned. I think the biggest thing, again, was the, I would only use half the product at a time. So I would take the initial half that I need to essentially cover the surface, mix that product up, and then I would come back with the second half like a day or two later and mix that product at that point and, and recoat or apply that second coat. I think that would probably achieve a better result overall. I do want to apologize if you're hoping to see some great transformation at the end. I apologize that this video did not come out that way. These things happen in DIY projects and we just have to take those lessons and learn from them. And the fact is that I would rather show you my failures and how to learn from those failures and help you guys learn from them as well so you don't make my mistakes than just show you a bunch of successes. Because the fact is, is that DIY projects do go wrong. They are not always a, a huge win or they go they don't go right the first time around and stuff. And nothing against those channels that show that, but I don't like channels that just show the wins and never show when things go wrong. Because every product, every project, every product you use, something is gonna go wrong at some point. And we're not teaching anyone if we're only showing our success. Okay, so I do need to figure out what I'm gonna do with the walls, because um, I still obviously have issues here. I'm not gonna leave them like this. So I'm gonna have to take some time and figure out how I wanna proceed from this moment. If you guys like this video, give me a thumbs up, click that subscribe button. You can leave some comments down below, especially if you have experience with this, maybe you can help me out. And we'll see you next time on the DIY Grunt.